about 31, I had a question coming out of section 4.1, number 93. And here we were given a table of values and asked, hey, is this a linear function? And if it is, can you go ahead and find the linear model? So let's take a look at rates of change. So I can see on my x's, I keep gaining 2 each time out. And let's see what we do for our y values. So to get from 6 to negative 19, I would have lost 25. And to get from negative 19 to 44, I would have lost 25. And sure enough, to get from negative 44 to negative 69, I would have lost 25. So that is what we would, that is a constant rate of change. And whenever you have a constant rate of change, you're looking at a linear function. So I can, oops, I can say, yes, this is linear. And if I want to look at that ratio, of the change in y over change in x, you see us doing it, right? We have the y's were changing by negative 25, and the, the x's were changing by 2, so we have our slope here, our change in y over change of x, of negative 12.5. All right, so constant rate of change, right? That ratio was always the same. So once you're there, you have a lot of ordered pairs, and you have your slope, so you could put your, oops, you could put your numbers into the point-slope formula, which would have been y minus y1 equals m times x minus x of 1, right? Or because they happen to actually, they gave you the y-intercept here, it's a little bit faster in this particular instance just to go into the slope-intercept form of the line. And the slope-intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b. So I can start swapping these things out. I know the slope. Right, so let's go ahead and we will say y is equal to negative 12.5x. And I also happen to know the y-intercept, or at least the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. Well, I know the x-coordinate also, right? And I'm putting that there, so I'm going to go ahead and write plus 6. All right, and that, that's it. The last thing I'm going to do is I just take a look at the notation given to me. I was in function mode, so I'm going to write g of x is negative 12.5x plus 6, and that's where you see me getting to my solution. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.